A lot of times when you are applying for a job, employer would like to test your Excel skills. In this video, I'll show you 20 simple step exercises that you will benefit from getting ready for such tests. Please make sure to watch the entire video from the beginning to the end, as there are references between the steps. Also, if you like the content, please click the like button and consider subscribing to this channel. Now let's go ahead and get started. Typical tests in this format are given with the multiple tabs. You will have instructions tab, which has number of the question, question itself, and then the answer. And then there is a data tab, where you need to manipulate with the data to provide the final answer. Our first question, expand columns in the product sales tab, review and analyze and describe data. Let's expand columns first. To do that, there are multiple ways to expand columns. You can manually expand it. For example, the state, you see it was covering Arizona uh, title in the state name a little bit. So to expand it, you can just move this uh, in different directions. And if you scroll down, you will see that uh, you may or may not uh, expand for longer state names. So a little bit easier way to do it is just double click on this line and then Excel takes care of itself. It takes the longest name that's in the title for this column and then expands it accordingly. So you just need to do it for all the columns. Once you're done expanding, let's look at the second part of the question, review, analyze, and describe data. We're looking here at the sales data. If you scroll down, you will see the entire volume of the data which is about 700 rows. And if you scroll back up, then you can see the columns, right? It shows the state, data shows sales by state, and it also categorizes data in specific segment. For example, you have government, mid-market, channel partners, and potentially small business and potentially other segments. You have product name, sale date, units sold, manufacturing costs, uh, sales, per, sales price per unit, and then volume discounts. Each row of data represents a sale transaction. For example, in the row four, you're looking for sale in state of Arizona for government. The product name is Cantaloria. Uh, sales date is in a different format, but we'll be able to work and fix that. And then you have units sold, uh, manufacturing costs, sales price per unit, and then volume discounts. We have completed step one of the exercise, so I'm going to go ahead and mark this step as complete. Let's look at the second question. Identify potential issues and errors with data. To do that, let's look at the data. I already mentioned as part of question one, we looked at the sales date um, that's been in very unusual format. We will uh, go ahead and fix it later because one of the questions is related how to fix sales date, but this is one of the issues that you can see. If you look at the data closely, you can also see that the sale price per unit for some values is not populated. I just scrolled the data and what you see is that uh, one of the rows is uh, blank, so there are no values. And this may uh, change the way it's uh, being calculated. Looks like there's more than one row that's empty. And uh, if I keep scrolling from start to end, that's how you search for this. You see also some other gaps uh, that's being identified. So I think we identified majority, if not all of the errors that you can see in that spreadsheet. Let's quickly summarize. The date format is in the wrong format. We see some missing values and some rows are blank. Keep in mind that sometimes employer might ask you to describe all of these uh, issues that you found with the data. I'm just highlighting answer as uh, green uh, on the background, but what you may need to do is you may need to put a short description based on what you've identified. Let's go to question three, which is format sales date column as short date format. To do that, let's go to product sales. Uh, this is our sales date uh, column. And what we need to do, we just need to go and uh, instead of general, select a different format. And the format we're looking for is short date. And as you can see, is Excel internally stores date as a numeric value. But as we convert it, uh, it converted it into the right format. We can go back now and mark this step as complete. Let's go and do the step four, which is apply quick filter to the data. To do that, let's navigate back to the product sales, um, highlight the first row, and the easiest way to apply filter is uh, sort and filter and filter. And what it does, you see the drop down boxes on each one of the uh, columns, uh, especially the titles for the columns uh, in the first row. And now 
you can do different actions based on the values in this column. What we can also do is we can highlight this row and mark it as bold, and we can go back now and mark this step as complete. There are multiple ways to identify blank rows and blank values in Microsoft Excel, and we'll look at the many different ones here as part of this exercise. For example, one way is to use Find and Select. You select Find, and then you select Match Entire Cell Content and leave this value as blank. And you can do Find Next, and it will scroll down through all the uh, values, or you can do Find All, and it will list all the values that are blank in Microsoft Excel. To do this effectively, you need to select the range in which you will be searching. To do that, you put the uh, cursor, for example, on the first value and then press Control shift end buttons and that selects the range. And then you can do Find and Select. And if you repeat those uh, instructions that I gave you uh, for the selection, it will go and Find Next or you can use Find All and it will quickly identify all the values and you can just expand and uh, go from one value to another, and that's using the Find option. This would allow you to manually identify all these blank values and then uh, delete them as necessary. Another way to do it is go to Special function in Microsoft Excel. To use that function, uh, you need to repeat the steps for selecting, Control shift end to select the range, and then go Find and Select, and in the same uh, section, there's a Go to Special item, and here you need to look at Select Blanks. And once you select blanks, uh, it identifies all the blanks for you, and you will be able to manually go ahead and uh, delete them based on the need. And what we are going to do uh, now to actually delete them is probably the easiest way to delete it. You can obviously use all other ways as well, but we will uh, select it, Control shift end uh, use the same selection, and then we will apply the filter. Um, in the previous step, I only highlighted the uh, first row for my selection. But the best way to select is to select the range and then apply the filter. And once you do that, it identifies all the blanks. The reason you don't want to just do the first row is because you want to uh, include the blanks. Otherwise, Excel thinks that the range will end here at the row 27 because there is an entire blank row and it doesn't include into your filtered selection all the rows after, for example, 28th, or if there are other blank rows, all the rows after those blank rows. So, But once you've selected and identified the entire range and applied a filter, then you will be able to see the blanks. And you can now unselect the values and select only blanks. And you see all the blank rows now have been highlighted and selected and ready for me to select and then uh, click Delete Row, which will delete all the blanks. Now, if we select them again, there are no blanks. We can go back now and mark this step five as complete. Very often students ask me, what is the fastest way to get ready for the test? I recommend the book uh, that you can download from my website, uh, which is called Top 50 Excel Interview and Assessment Test Question. In this book, you'll find top 50 questions that are being asked during the interview and uh, the answers to those questions and how to manage and handle those. There are also uh, some instructions, uh, some tips on how to prepare and pass the test, and there's also a lot of information about how to get ready. For example, you have uh, worksheets with exercises and step-by-step -step instructions. Make sure to check it out uh, and you will find links to uh, where you can find more information in the description of this video. Now let's go to step six, uh, where we need to create new column and convert product name into proper case. As you can see, product name is a separate column here. To create a new column, we need to select uh, the column next to product name uh, and click insert, and that created a blank column. So we will call it product name two. And in this column, we will use formula to convert this values from the product name into the same value with the same text, but proper case. And proper case means that the value will have the first letter uh, of the name as the uppercase letter, and then the rest of the letters uh, would be in the lowercase. This will help fix issues like with the uh, row 4 and row 11, where Cantaloria is uh, all uppercase. To do that, we need to use equal sign and then uh, function name proper. 
and then we need to point to the value in the column C. Because this value was already uh, in proper case, uh, we don't see any change. But this value, we will see a change. To expand it, we can just drag this box, and I'll just show you for the uh, small area here. And you can see that uh, now even this values in the row 4 and 11, uh, they are in the proper case. To more effectively apply formula, we need to select the value where formula has been already applied, click uh, Copy button, and then select the value next to it at the bottom, and then use Shift Page Down button. I already showed you how to use shortcut, so that's another way you just uh, using Shift and navigating through pages and keep selecting the values. And this way we will get uh, to the end. It's effective when you don't have too many rows. Uh, we only have 700, so it's still pretty manageable. But if you have more than uh, thousands and thousands of rows, this probably you would want to use shortcut. And as you can see toward the end of it, instead of page down, I'm just going to use the arrow down to select the, exactly the range that I'm looking for. And then I'm just going to paste. And the uh, formula has been applied for the entire row. We can go back now and mark this step 6 as complete. Next step is uh, we are going to remove extra spaces from product name in the new column. To do that effectively, we need to use formula that removes spaces. And the formula that removes spaces uh, is called trim. We do not have to create a third column. We can just apply formula. Um, on top of proper, we can use trim function. To do that, we just use equal sign trim and then take everything that proper function was doing right inside the parentheses uh, for the trim function. Now you can see that extra spaces have been removed. And now what we need to do, we need to reapply the same formula for the rest of the values. And you see that now all the extra spaces have been removed and there is a consistency in the values in the product name two column. Now we can go back and mark this step for step 7 as complete. A lot of times my students ask me what are the best tips to get prepared for Excel interview and assessment test. One of the best tips to prepare is download the latest Excel version and explore based on the job that you're applying for and based on the functionality that you anticipate is going to be on the test. You can also use outlines from the test provider, for example indeed.com or a lot of other providers, they have outlines of their tests right on their website, as well as sample questions. You can use those to prepare for Excel test and make sure you're ready and understand those questions that you will be asked. You can also download and read Excel books and eBooks. Those help greatly for you to prepare and understand the latest features of Microsoft Excel. You can also download and follow practice exercises, get hands-on experience in relevant topics, and also, as you watch this video, as well as a lot of other videos on this channel, consider posting your questions and suggestions in the comment of the video. Also, please make sure you consider subscribing to the channel, as I consistently post new videos and new materials to help you get prepared. Now let's go to the next step, uh, step 8, copy values from product name 2 back to product name and delete product name 2 column. To do that, we need to select all the values that have been converted to proper case and spaces have been removed. And we'll do it by using shortcut control shift arrow down that selects the entire uh, area uh, for this column until the end, from the beginning until the end. And uh, what we can do, we can use copy. Uh, and when we paste these values, we will just paste them as values. And now uh, we see, let's confirm that there's no formula, the value is just the value here. Uh, and it means that we've accomplished the goal uh, of copying the data. And now the next step is to remove the product name to column. To do that, we need to highlight the column, do right mouse click, click delete, and that deleted the column. Uh, product name two, and now we can go back to the instructions tab and mark this step as complete. Let's go to step 9, and here in step 9 we need to use find replace function in Excel to fix product names uh, to Jetta XLC and Veloso SC. First, let's go back to product sales tab and look at what's wrong with those products. If we select them in the filter, we see that 
using proper function, change the XLC as well as SC into first letter uppercase and the remaining letters as lowercase. The best way to fix it is just manually replace uh, the value. To do that, um, we need to use uh, Excel find and replace function. So we need to select uh, on the tab find and replace. So we will use replace because we just need to replace the value. And we can use Excel C and we can say that uh, we're not matching the entire cell content, but rather matching just the specific uh, symbol that we're looking for. And we will replace it with Excel C. And we'll find first value and we'll try to replace it. And you see the replacement is correct. So now we can either keep clicking or click replace all. And it made 93 replacements. Uh, same thing, we would want to replace SC. And uh, we would want to use uppercase. So what we need to do, we need to click find next. And you see that SC this way finds some states like Wisconsin and maybe uh, some words that would use SC. So this may not be uh, appropriate replacement. This is the reason why it's always good to check before you actually click the replace button. And uh, it's always a good idea um, to validate before doing replacements. We can do a couple things here. One thing we can do is that uh, if I close this, you see that in the product name Velosa SC, there is a space. So we can say replace space SC uh, with space SC. So this way we can uniquely identify the values. And second way we can also use is uh, match the case. So this SC is uh, first letter S is uppercase and the second letter C is lowercase. So we can use this. So there are two ways to do it. So let's try to uh, use the first one first. So we'll add the space and I'm going to add a space here and let's see what it will find. Find next and you see that it found it correctly. Uh, so let's do replace. That worked very well. Now we can uh, click replace all and it will replace it or we can just do match the case uh, and in this case we don't even have to have the space but if we say match the case find next it will find the value and it will replace it correctly as well so I'm just gonna come back here and do replace and then do replace all and it made 104 replacements we can close this find and replace tab um, dialog box and uh, we can go back and mark step 9 as complete. Let's go ahead and identify all sales transactions from 2019. To do that, let's go to the product sales tab and identify sales transactions. We need to look at the date, so identification of transactions for 2019 will be done by looking at the sales date field. The best way to do it is to use the filter on the field. So filter is already enabled. So all we need to do is just click on the drop down box and we see that there are two years associated with transactions. And if we expand each year, we see the month. So all we need to do here to identify 2019 transactions is uncheck 2020. And this way, only 2019 transactions, and we can scroll down to double check, will be enabled and available in this document. And we can go ahead and mark this step as complete. In the next question, we need to identify all the discounts given to the customers that are greater than $50,000. To do that, let's navigate to Product Sales tab. And what we can see here, we can see the Volume Discounts column. And the best way to identify discounts would be to sort this column from smallest to largest and then identify the breakpoint of $50,000. So all transactions below row 267 will be discounts in the range of greater than $50,000 because we sorted the column H in the smallest to largest order. We can go ahead and mark this exercise as complete. In the next step, we would need to add a new column called gross sales and calculate the value of gross sales as a multiple of sales multiplied by units sold. To do that, let's navigate to the Product Sales tab and we will create the Gross Sales column as column I. First step is to add the title. Once we have the title, let's create the value, calculated value, for the first row. To do that, let's use the formula in the cell I2 
and our formula would be equal and then we have units sold multiplied by sale price per unit we'll hit enter and it has the calculated value now the next step is to replicate this entire value for the rest of the column i we know that this excel sheet has 698 rows to replicate the formula we would need to copy the formula select this range from i3 to i698 and paste the formula into that range so let's do it step by step the first step is to select the formula and click copy next step we would need to move our cursor to I3 and define here in the upper left corner the range I3 to I698. Once this range is selected, we can paste the formula. And you see that all the values with the formula have been pasted. And we can mark this step as complete. Let me share with you some tips on how to pass Excel assessment test during COVID-19. You need to be prepared to take Excel assessment test at home. Keep in mind that you might be monitored. Provider might ask you to enable a camera so they can see you and what you're doing during the test. They may also ask you to download special software that will monitor everything that you do on the screen during the test. Anticipate questions based on the job position and employer specialty. If you're applying for analyst position, a lot of times you might be dealing with sales transactional data. You would need to understand pivot tables, how to sort and filter data, how to identify transactions, and how to answer specific business questions. If you're looking for accountant positions, a lot of times you may need to be able to download the data, upload it into accounting system, process it, import, and understand different features of Excel that are related to the specific functionality. Consider researching and practicing before the test. Having hands-on experience is one of the most important things. And a lot of times, tests are shifting from just answering questions and giving you a predefined uh, set of answers to asking you to do some hands-on exercises. Consider also reflecting after the test. And what I mean by that is that you might want to write down everything that went right and everything that could be improved for the next test. Then you can look at those notes and, also, and decide what do you want to do differently next time. It's very important to do it right after the test, maybe same day, maybe the same couple hours, when your memory is fresh and when you can uh, actually remember what happened and do some critical analytics of how you can improve uh, going forward. Also, consider improving your hands-on skills in Excel. This is one of the best ways to demonstrate knowledge and expertise in this tool from Microsoft. In the next step, we would need to add a new column called COGS, which stands for Costs of Goods Sold, and calculate it as Manufacturing Cost multiplied by Number of Units Sold. To do that, let's go to the Product Sales tab, and we will create this new column as Column J. And first step is to create the column, is give it a title. Now when we have a title, let's add the value into cell J2. To add the value, we would need to apply the formula, which would be equal Units Sold, multiplied by manufacturing cost. Now we have the value in the column J2. Now we need to replicate this value for the rest of the cells in this column. To do that, let's select the range. Let's first copy the formula. To do it, select the formula, click Copy. And then the, in the next step, we would need to uh, define the range, which would be J3 through J698. Once range is selected, we need to paste the formula into this uh, range. And once we do it, we can mark this step as complete. In the next step, we would need to create a new profit column and calculate profit as a gross sales by using COGS and discount. So there are no specific instructions, uh, but ultimately the formula here would be uh, profit equals gross sales minus cost of goods sold and minus discount. So that's a tricky exercise, but now you have the formula, uh, it would be easy to do it. Let's go to product sales tab and create column profit. And in this column, once it's created, we'll apply the formula. And formula would be equals gross sales minus cost of goods sold minus volume discount. Now we need to apply this uh, formula for the rest of the cells in the column K. 
To do that, let's repeat the steps we did in the previous parts of the exercise. We'll use copy, and then we will select the range, which would be K3 through K698, uh, and then we paste the formula. You see that for some transactions, profit is negative, but that's part of the next step. Now we can go ahead and mark this step as complete. In the next step, let's format the values in created columns as accounting and then also analyze calculated values in profit column. To do that, let's go back to the product sales tab. And first, we already have values in column K where profit uh, is calculated uh, as accounting values. You see dollar sign here. So accounting value represents the uh, values in accounting format, which shows dollars and cents, or local currency based on your location. We need to do the same thing for uh, columns I and J. And the reason is, just for your information, that column K already has accounting format, is because it uses volume discounts in the formula, and the formatting from that column H was reapplied to column K as a profit. Uh, now, we only need to do it uh, for columns I and J, and to do it, we need to select both columns and select the dollar sign here, uh, which is the accounting number format, or you can also select it from here as accounting. And we need to expand it a little bit uh, so the values fit well into the columns. Second part of the exercise is do the analysis of profit column. And you see that for some transactions, profit is large, uh, but for some transactions, uh, profit is actually negative. So uh, the items have been sold at the loss, right? Where everywhere you see the negative number, which is number in parentheses, is the negative number. It means that um, the discounts uh, and combination of gross sales and cost of goods sold uh, resulted in the negative profit. And if you scroll, we can sort the values. Uh, there are a lot of uh, transactions that actually resulted in the negative profit. So that uh, allows us to mark uh, exercise 15 as complete. Let's go to the next step where we need to create Excel pivot table. In this step, we need to select all the columns from A until all our calculated columns, uh, column K, and then go on to insert and create pivot table. And it asks us, uh, do we want to select table or range, which we did. So we have product sales as uh, columns A through K. And uh, another choice, we will create a new worksheet just so we can work um, in the new worksheet and don't change any data in the existing worksheet. It, it makes it a little bit easier. Once we have this default selections, we're not changing anything. Let's click OK. And it created pivot table. And we can mark this step as complete. Let's go to the next step and calculate gross sales total for enterprise segment in 2019. To do that, let's go to the pivot table we just created. Let's zoom in a little bit. And then here we would need to choose the fields. And let me explain a little bit how pivot table works in case you, uh, you may know or you may not know. The best way to think of pivot table is uh, as something that helps us analyze transactional data. So we have multiple rows of data here, for example, some for Florida, some for Wisconsin. And pivot table allows us to group this data based on the values and based on the business decisions that we're trying to make. To do that, we need to select, and you see there are four selection fields. One is filter, which filters the data. Second one uh, represents the rows that we are selecting, very important. Third one represents the columns, and the values represents the formulas, for example, sum. Uh, as it shows some of values uh, that we will be selecting. So let's think creatively, uh, what would we need to analyze gross sales? We need to uh, have the segment data, we need to have a date data, and we need to have a gross sales data. So those are the three minimum things we need to select to uh, complete the analysis and answer this business question. So let's go ahead and select all three. First one is the sales date. And you see, once we select it, Excel automatically knows that this is a date field, and it organized the data as 2019 and 2020. And this is probably a blank row, which we didn't delete. Uh, so that's a good way to go back and delete it if you want to, uh, because that's the reason we were cle clearing out and cleaning up this uh, data before we started processing and answering business questions. But that was one of the things that we've selected. Now let's select the segment. So once we select the segment, you see that segment right now is under the date, 
but we actually want to group by segment. So this is incorrect. I just selected the date because that seemed logical at the time. To do that, let's put segment on top of the date. And you see that once we did this, we have uh, channel partner segment, enterprise segment, government, mid-market, and small business. And we're interested in enterprise uh, sales segment. And the third part of this equation is the gross sales. And that's the value that will go into the summary because this represents and will be calculated as a summary values. Now, we see that we have a hierarchy of enterprise sales for different years. And you see for 2019, this is the value that represents the sales for enterprise segment. This is the value for 2020 that represents enterprise segment. And this is the total. To make it easier to read, we can highlight this column and uh, put an accounting symbol here and expand it a little bit so everything fits. But now we ultimately answered the first business questions. Uh, uh, calculate gross sales total for enterprise segment in 2019. Let's go back and confirm. This is our answer. Uh, this is the total enterprise segment. But for 2019, this would be the value of enterprise sales uh, for this particular year. And we can go back and mark this step as complete. Let me give you some of the tips uh, on the best ways to watch the videos on this channel. Consider dedicating uninterrupted chunks of time when you can watch the video so you can understand not just the questions and answers, because they might be different, but also the logic and analytics behind the answers and why a particular answer was selected. When your attention drifts during the video, make sure you take a break and then come back and continue watching from the place where you stopped watching initially. Consider downloading workbooks and repeating steps. When you do it, it's much easier to remember and this is the best reinforcement and best way to prepare for the test. Try to watch from start to finish. A lot of times uh, when I create the video, I refer particular answers from maybe question one during the question three or five and etc. So if you skip something and think that you know the answer, you might miss important information. And the last but not least tip is uh, consider setting playback speed so that you can keep yourself engaged, give yourself time to absorb the content, and pause the video, and try to learn the material by doing hands-on exercises. Let's go ahead and calculate profit for Jetta XLT product for Q3 of 2019. So Q3 is month between July and September. And uh, to do that, let's go back to our pivot table that we've created, unselect values from the previous exercise and now we need to uh, determine what are the fields that we need so we need a product name right and product would be the best way to group uh, now we need the quarters uh, and you see that based on the dates excel automatically creates quarters values for us because excel knows what are those values and then we need years as well uh, and probably years would go on top of the quarters, right? Because we need to select 2019. So the grouping hierarchy would be products, then year, and then specific quarter for that year. And then we need profit. So we will get the value from our calculated profit column. We can mark this column as uh, an accounting value. And now all we need to do once we group the data correctly, all we need to do is uh, find the Jetta XLT product. This value represents total sales for Jetta XLT, but we're interested in uh, Q3 of 2019. In Q3 of 2019, this would be the amount for Q3 um, of 2019, and we, can, we have to reapply the accounting value for this uh, just to see it. Um, so the value of profit for quarter three of 2019 is $21,609,251. And we can go ahead and mark this step as complete. In the next step, let's compare total profit for Cataloria products between Q2 of 2019 and Q2 of 2020. To do that, let's go back to our pivot table. And what we need to select first, we need to select the product name. Then we need to select years. We need to select quarters to build a hierarchy uh, for the selection, and we need to select the profit, which would be a sum of the values. You can see that for Cantaloria product, uh, Q2 2019 uh, sales uh, could be highlighted here, uh, and uh, we just need to highlight this whole column into accounting value, and we can highlight it 
Q2 sales for Cantalore product uh, in a different color so we can easily compare and then we can highlight it um, for Q2 of 2020 uh, also in a different color so we can compare so you see that um, sales for Q2 of 2019 is uh, in amount of six million dollars sorry profits for Q2 of 2019 is an amount of uh, six million dollars and they grew substantially more than uh, tenfold on, in Q2 of uh, 2020 uh, they represent 82 million so it is possible that this is uh, just the starting point for the sales and year after they took off maybe after commercial maybe after advertisement maybe there's a, after the demand uh, from people and they grew substantially we can go back and mark this step as complete in the next step we would need to calculate total profit for all sales in Wisconsin so let's go back to our uh, pivot table unselect all the values from the previous step and then we need to uh, select things a little bit differently so we need to select the state we need to select the years so now we have different sales uh, and sales for all the years and we need to look at the profits uh, the next step we need to change the format to accounting format and what you see is uh, we are looking for total sales in Wisconsin and they represent um, total profits in Wisconsin and profit values um, in Wisconsin are 437 million dollars I think this is the largest state uh, in terms of profits uh, for all the sales so we can go back and mark this step as complete thanks for watching make sure to check out my ebook top 50 Excel interview and assessment test questions it helped a lot of students to get ready and pass the test also for most of my videos you can download Excel worksheet files to follow along this is one of the best ways to get up to speed and reinforce the material consider subscribing and following this channel I post new tests and new exercises periodically to help you get prepared leave questions or suggestions in the comments of this video and all the best on your Excel interview and assessment test thanks for watching